If you're new to my channel, my name is Andrea and this is Dessert First. So this is one of my favorite Christmas cookies. It's called Favorite Butter Cookies and my mom would make these every year for Christmas. Um, they're a rollout cookie so we're going to cut them out but she would usually she she always had a a Santa Claus cookie cutter and a star I think a bell I think she had four or five maybe an angel I forget now a tree so anyway she still has those cookie cutters so I have some of my own but they're not nearly as cool as hers so but um, I'm going to show you how to make these cookies if you have nieces and nephews or little children or grandchildren this is a great time to get them in the kitchen um, I used to mix these up and divide the dough let my nieces and nephews roll theirs out cut out whatever cookies they wanted we would bake them when they were cooled down I would make up buttercream and different um, bowls they could choose what color they wanted um, they could use whatever sprinkles they wanted so they just had a wonderful time just getting in there and being creative and having a hand in uh, making the cookies and these are great for leaving you know at the fireplace for Santa so if you believe in all that Christmas stuff if not they're just a great cookie <laughs> so um, so let's get started all right, so let's get started on our butter cookies. So in my mixer, I've got two sticks of softened butter. You can use salted or unsalted, either one. That will be fine. And I'm gonna add one cup of granulated sugar and then one whole egg. And then we are just going to beat this together, just cream it until it's light and fluffy. So I just beat these for about two minutes and I stopped it a couple of times and scraped the bowl down just because everything always winds up on the side. So, but that is nice and light and fluffy. So now we're gonna go for our next ingredients. So now, we're going to add two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. So I'm going to add one cup in first and I'm just going to mix that in. it's mixed in pretty well then I'm just going to add the half cup and then I'm going to add about half of the last cup and while that's mixing I'm going to add a teaspoon of baking powder to this flour just going to mix it in there a little bit that in. And now we're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla. Whoop. Okay, so we went a little over a teaspoon. That's okay. And then two tablespoons of orange juice. And I'm using pulp free orange juice. And we'll just let that go kind of on slow low so you don't splash it out everywhere. Alright, we just mixed it up. Let's just scrape everything down. Now we're gonna have to let this dough chill and it needs to chill for at least two to three hours or you can uh, chill it overnight. So, 
If you're just going for two or three hours, you could just, if you didn't need your bowl for anything else, you could just take it off, cover it in plastic wrap, and then pop it in the fridge. But I don't have enough room in my fridge, so I'm going to actually wrap this, and I may let mine go um, till the next day. So. so we'll just get that all scraped off. And let's get some plastic wrap. Yeah, you could not, the dough is way too soft at this stage to be able to roll it out. I'm just gonna take this and just kinda wrap that over. Try and wrap that over as much as I can. Like so. And then I'm gonna, since I'm gonna let it stay in the fridge overnight, I'm gonna wrap it another time to give it more protection in case in case something got against it and tore the plastic wrap. And if you wanted to make this um, a few days ahead of time, you could do that. After you wrap it, I would just put it into a Ziploc bag and squeeze the air out and leave it there. That way, if you have anything that's um, got strong smells in your refrigerator, it's going to be less likely to um, draw those smells into your dough. So, all right. All right, so we're going to get our cookie dough out so we can roll it. Now I left mine in overnight so it's pretty firm but like I said earlier two to three hours is fine. So you don't want to work with the entire amount at once. Um, you wind up working in too much flour in with it and then you'll have tough cookies. So I usually will just kind of divide it into thirds and then just work with a third at a time. So I'm just going to sprinkle some flour on my counter, on my clean counter. I'm just sprinkling all-purpose flour. That's the flour that I used in the cookies. That's what I have on hand. So, and then what I'm going to do is I usually will put a little bit there, spread just a dusting over the top, try to flatten it out a little bit more. Because like I said, we're not looking to work in a lot of flour. I just need it not to stick. And then our rolling pin. All right, so we're just going to roll this and it's whoop, soft. I'm gonna have to work that back in a little bit. It's still pretty cold, so it's gonna tear easier. Times I will, like so. And you want these about a quarter of an inch. If you go much thinner than that, then they're gonna 
burn. And I will usually, kind of like a pie dough, I will kind of lift it and move it. cookies because these are the cookies my mom always made at Christmas time so at some point maybe I'll get her um, cookie cutters but these are my cookie cutters she has the old school I think she has a star a tree and a Santa and I'm trying to remember what the other one was maybe an angel I don't I don't recall it's been quite a while since I've seen them, so. so I'm just going to cut these out. Usually I will do like one batch and then I'll do another batch of another shape. Just trying to optimize, get the most out. And we're actually going to put these on an ungreased, unlined baking sheet. So I'm just going to transfer that over. Transfer the stars. candy canes we can get out of this. Just bring all of this back in. Try not to get too much flour mixed in. It's easier said than done. Let's go a couple more candy canes. Of our cookies is done. I've just put them on a cooling rack to cool down completely before we frost them. So this batch baked for nine minutes. Um, the batch after that baked for 10. So it's really just going to depend on your cookies. So you can see how the stars and they always do this get just a little bit of color on the edges so anytime you have a cookie that may be a little bit thinner because you can kind of see the stocking is a little thicker than the tree but it's okay there's nothing wrong with it you just don't want them completely brown because they'll just be overdone and won't taste very good. But these will be covered up by frosting so you just will never see it. So we're going to let these cool down and then we'll get to decorating. Our cookies are cooled down so now we're going to decorate them. Now some people will do the the nice pretty like royal icing and make them look all fancy and pretty that's not my jam I'm gonna make these the way my mom always made them buttercream frosting they taste really good and you can make them look really pretty as well so I went on ahead and made a batch of buttercream and I will link the recipe up here for you um, it is in the basics folder so it's just the American buttercream. And I used uh, vanilla in it. Sometimes I will use almond, but 
for today, I just used vanilla. All right, so we're just gonna add some buttercream. containers here. And then we'll leave this remaining just white. Okay, so I've got three colors. So we've got a gold color that will be for our stars. And I like using the gel. That way it doesn't thin down your buttercream like the little liquids. And it's just stronger, so just gonna add some of that. It's best to just add a little bit at a time till you get the desired color that you want. just a nice buttery yellow so I like that if you want yours darker you can add some more to it or less if you want it to be a very pale but I like this color so now if this was too dark for you you could always add some more of the white to just kind of thin it out a bit so okay so we'll set that one aside So now let's make some green. And I want this a little darker. I mean, this is a pretty soft mint green, but I want it a little darker because this is a Christmas tree. a little darker. If you wanted yours darker than that, then just add a little more, but I think that will work for me. And then the next one is going to be red. And red is one of those hard colors. I know some have said that they thought the powdered was more concentrated, but I've tried the powdered and it is not nearly as red as this red. So you can find this on Amazon really easy. This is what I use in red velvet cake. So we're just gonna add a drop. Okay, 
that's a, a pretty hot pink. So let's add another drop. Ooh, that might have been a little more of a drop. Still not quite dark enough now you could go with that especially if you're wanting to avoid red dye all right we'll call it dusty red So I'm just going to use an offset spatula like this. And I do have sprinkles because, you know, they're Christmas cookies, so they need sprinkles. So usually I try to decide what sprinkles I want for which cookie first. So I think my yellow ones, I'm going to use some of this gold or maybe some of this darker gold. Maybe we'll do one of each. So let's do our yellow stars. It doesn't take a ton of frosting. I just... There we go, just a light little sparkle, a little glitter. So I'm just going to set that over here. Let's do our other star. Usually just kind of kind of run the knife back and forth a little bit like that makes it look pretty and our buttercream is pretty soft because it's super warm in here today so we'll be okay to get all four of these frosted before we decorate them I don't like these little colorful balls so you can kind of make it like garland so Put like a yellow one at the top and then you can just kind of, it takes a little time or you can just randomly, so let's just randomly put some here like Christmas balls. We got two red ones next to each other. Oh well. a little bit of white here to kind of look like snow. Now 
they look cute. And these, the little balls, they are hard, but once they set um, for a day and the frosting sets up, they'll soften up. Now let's go with our stockings. So this one will be a two part. So let's do our red first. So we're just gonna do this. So I'm just gonna take this about there because there's a little, you can kind of tell there's a little bit of a the shape kind of for the top for the furry part of it to use these sprinkles they're kind of a red but it kind of has like a almost like a white it, it's just the way it's cut so it just really gives it some shimmer so we're just going to go ahead and sprinkle that on the red part okay and then we're going to put our white furry part on the top You can leave that so it looks like it has some texture. Now this recipe actually, mom's note said makes three dozen, but honestly that's just going to depend on the size of your cookie cutters. So her cookie cutters were a little bigger. Um, I got almost four dozen out of this but if you've got little cookie cutters you may get a lot if you have really large ones you're not going to get very many so all right so i'm going to finish decorating the rest of these but this is one tray of our cookies now you're not going to want to stack these on top of each other you're going to want to leave them out because they need to set up so if you stack them, they're just going to be stuck together. So leave them out. I usually just leave them set out uncovered for several hours. And then um, if it's later in the evening, I'll just put them in a container that has a lid, but not stacking them. So I may have multiple containers out, just um, cake carriers and cookie carriers that have lids. But anyway, this is an adorable way to do some cookies for Christmas, have the little ones to get in there and help and, and uh, make those uh, choices of colors and decorations. So, all right, until next time.